Jennifer here again with our third watercolor painting lesson. Today we're going to do watercolor resist. You will need your tray or some sort of backing. Um, keep in mind the texture of the backing because this is going to become part of your piece as well. Um, you will also need your directions. Watercolor resist. Refer back to this as you need to. You will also need your watercolor resist bag. In here, we have some thin paper. This paper is just regular copy paper that you would use in a printer, um, your printer at home. Uh, we don't want to use watercolor paper for this because it's too thick. So we want a thin paper. You can also use tracing paper. Thinner the paper, the more careful you have to be because um, you could tear a hole in it if you rub with the crayon too hard. So this paper should work fine, just plain old copy paper. And we also have a crayon. This is a white crayon. You can use whatever color crayon you want. And we have some glue dots. Um, these are optional if you need them to hold your, your textured object uh, in place, then you can use them. Um, you may not need them. I'm going to use them though. Um, and for my object, I'm going to use this little piece of seaweed that I found at the beach. Isn't that pretty? It's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you want to get something that has some texture in it. Texture can be smooth, it can be rough, it can be wavy, it can be bumpy. So I'm going to take this glue dot off and I'm just going to put this, hold this down with it here, just so it doesn't slide around too much. And like I said, if you have something that's really heavy, it may not need uh, a glue dot to hold it together. I'm just going to use two of these right here. Okay, so I've got this stuck down now. We're going to take a piece of this paper. Remember, this is the thinner paper. This is not the watercolor paper. This is just regular copy paper. I'm going to put it down on top of this and hold it. I'm going to take my crayon and rub. I'm just going to rub all around. If your crayon gets too short, you can always just take the paper off. You can rub it on the side as well. And I can kind of see what's happening here. Okay. So once you think you've got your crayon rubbed on top of your textured object, Now, the next thing we're going to do is mix up some watercolor paint. I'm going to use red because I love red. And put some on my palette. Some water. I'm going to get it pretty fluid. So, enough water here. take this and I'm just gonna 
Hello, bird. You can see where the white crayon is. The paint will not stick to that. It resists. It resists the wax of the crayon. So we're gonna just keep going until we get our paper covered. Just keep going until you get everything covered. And when that's done, you're gonna to wanna to let it dry. Um, probably shouldn't take too long to dry. Not a whole day, but just make sure it's dry. And then we're gonna go back into it again um, with either watercolor or our colored pencils and see what we can find shape-wise in there. So I'll be right back with a dried piece. Okay guys, hey, this is Jennifer back with the dried piece. Uh, this is a piece that dried. This is actually a gigantic leaf. Um, and if you look at this, these lines here, I actually, I did this on a picnic table at home. And so that's the texture of the table behind it. But you see the leaves here, where the veins of the, the leaf are. Um, and I, this looks like a tree to me. So I think I'm going to go into it with my colored pencils and make it into a tree. It's actually, this leaf looking like a tree is called a fractal. So I'm gonna go in with some white here and just kinda get a little bit more contrasting. I'm just going to keep going. See what else I see in here. I might put, I might put a bird. I got a little cardinal or something up here. Maybe a bird. And I'm just going to keep going. I'll post this when it's finished as I hope you post yours as well on Facebook. And actually, you know what? It's looking more like a cat than a bird. I'm gonna make it a cat, because why not? <laughs> a little red cat, yes. Oh, I like that. There you go. When you're doing art, you can always change your mind and make it something different. So I have a little red cat up in the tree. Um, please also, if you would, be so kind as to fill out our survey um, and let us know what you think about our classes, our online classes, and what you would like to see in the future. Any suggestions you have, anything you want to learn about, and I will see you back here next time. Bye.